Just me. Philippians. Philippians 2, 3 through 11. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ, who being in the very nature of of God, did not consider it equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. First John 4, 9 through 11. This is how God showed his love among us, that he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our Sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another.
continue our time of worship as we, well, will you stand with me? Let us continue our time of worship as we bring forth our tithes and our offerings and we sing the doxology. celebrate this season of your son coming to earth and being born of a virgin and laid in a manger to die on a cross for our sin. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. And Lord, we pray that as we are faithful to you of giving of our tithes and our offerings, Lord, that you would use them to glorify yourself, to further your kingdom, to share and spread your gospel in this community, in this state, this country, and this world. We thank you for that, and we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to John chapter 1 if you're not already there. I solicited these gentlemen last minute to help me out with something, so I appreciate their flexibility. <clears throat> there we go. I know the decorating committee is probably losing their mind thinking, we just put this stuff away so that nobody would... Don't you see how beautiful the church looks? Yep, I want them all. Well, I mean, that's good enough. Whatever you got there. Yeah. You see, because it happens every year. We get the boxes down from the attic. We get the boxes out of the shed. We bring them up from the basement. We put up the Christmas tree. We set the nativity out. We put up Christmas lights all around the house. And we enjoy those decorations for a few weeks or for some people, maybe even a few months. But then it ends. And we put them all away. The special decorations come down, and the everyday decor goes back up, and Christmas is over until next year. Christmas goes back in a box and waits. But is that what Christmas is? I want to suggest to you this morning that as big as Christmas is in our society today, and it is huge. It starts at Halloween now, and it goes past New Year's. And it's all-encompassing. How many Christmas get-togethers, and how many office things, and how many different people are on your list, and how many traditions do you have? It is huge. But as big as what Christmas is in our society, it is so much more than what our culture says. 
And I pray that you don't keep Christmas in your box and get it out for a few weeks or a few months and then put it back. Christmas is a month-long holiday at minimum, maybe a full two months with hundreds of Christmas songs and dozens of Christmas movies and, and all the parties and gatherings and special food and cards and presents and traditions. And I'll be the first to admit, I love all that. There's nothing wrong with all that. It's one of my favorite times of the year. But all of that goes back in a box. And I want to talk to you this morning about a Christmas that isn't a season, a Christmas that changes your life, that gives you meaning, that lasts not only all year, but all your life and into the next. And so let's read from John chapter 1, already beautifully read, by the way, by a few of our children today. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. This is talking about the pre-incarnate Christ, the eternal Son of God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life that was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not recognize him, excuse me, did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, be glorified now in the proclamation of your word, the celebration of your incarnation, Lord, of the good news of the gospel message that you became a man. Love was when God became a man, where he could come down where I could see. Love was when Jesus was nailed to the tree. Lord, thank you for lovingly walking with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so this is Christmas. I hope you have fun. A very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's hope it's a good one without any fear. This is the best that the world can offer that we might have a good Christmas. And I'm not discouraging saying Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas or. Uh, or any of those things, that's, that's appropriate. But that's the best that the world has to offer. I hope that you have a good holiday season. For the world, Christmas is just something that you take out of the box and enjoy it for a while. And, 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 and it's, it's a feeling of joy and good cheer. Haul out the holly. Put up the tree before my spirit falls again. Fill up the stocking. I I may be rushing things, but deck the halls again now, for we need a little Christmas. A little Christmas? That's a good question. We need a little Christmas right this very minute. Candles in the window, carols in the spinet. Yes, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Why? Well, I've grown a little leaner. Oh. This must have been written a long time ago. We don't grow much leaner these days. (laughs) Grown a little colder. Grown a little sadder. Grown a little older. Anybody feel that way as they go through life? 
So I need a little angel sitting on my shoulder. I need a little Christmas now. We need a little music. We need a little laughter. We need a little singing. We need a little snappy, happy ever after. We need a little Christmas. Christmas is almost described like medicine here. We just need a little shot of something. Uh, Incidentally, this song comes from a musical, Mame. Some of you know that from Lucille Ball days. Came from a Broadway show before that with uh, uh, Angela Lansbury, I think where the main character loses her fortune in the stock market crash of 1929. And back in the days when Christmas, before Christmas started at Halloween, this was a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, and she's saying, let's just get out the decorations now because we need a pick-me-up here. We've just lost everything, so we just need a little bit of Christmas. And I haven't seen the movie, but I I saw the, the clip from this scene this week, and and they get, they get the tinsel out, and they start decorating, and they decorate somebody like a Christmas tree, and they dance around, and, and it lifts their spirits. But I imagine only for a little while, it's just, it's just a, a temporary shot of joy, not a, a lasting joy. Maybe it'll numb the pain for a while, but what happens after the nostalgia and the warm fuzzies wear out, wear off? Delicious food and decorations and favorite songs and festive gatherings aren't enough to heal wounds from the broken, dark world that we live in. And for some, they might be a distraction, but for others, even those fall flat. They don't get us out of the funk that we're in. For many, the holidays serve as a reminder of disappointments and loss. Families that have fallen apart, loved ones we've lost, failures, and unmet longing. We want to be happy and and experience the festive joy, and we feel like we're supposed to to have that joy, and, and then when we don't have it, then that makes it worse. And all the tinsel and all the holly and the Christmas playlist on Spotify aren't enough to penetrate into the very situation of our lives. That's what happens when your Christmas comes in a box. It doesn't fulfill. It doesn't meet the need. Christmas in a box can't bring peace on earth and goodwill toward men. It can't offer lasting hope. It's peace only for a season. It's hope only for a time. It's love and joy only temporarily. Even the world knows that there's got to be something more. In 1967, two years into the Vietnam War, Stevie Wonder wrote, Someday at Christmas, there'll be no more wars when we have learned what Christmas is for. When we have found what life is really worth, there'll be peace on earth. And I share his yearning for real, lasting peace. I share his disdain for violence and hate, but I'm afraid that his hope is sorely misplaced. Because at the risk of overanalyzing poetry, look where he's put his hope, that we might learn what Christmas is for, that we might be able to get from this holiday, this idea that we can just love one another and move past all the hurts and sins of the world. His hope is still in Christmas that comes in a box. It's still in an idea. Someday at Christmas, man will not fail. Hate will be gone and love will prevail. Someday a new world that we can start. That doesn't happen with the progress of man. It doesn't happen with progressive societal and ethical and moral evolution. I don't have faith that man will not fail and that love will prevail. The yearning is there even... Even the Advent sort of yearning for peace and justice and righteousness and love. But the source of hope 
is misplaced in this song. It can't be found in a generic sense of Christmas. Hope can't be merely an idea. It is found in a person. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. For to us is born a child. To us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of his peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We don't need a little Christmas. We need a great big God. We don't need a little laughter. We need a wonderful counselor. We don't need a little music. We need the Prince of Peace. We don't need a holiday or even a holiday month. We need a holy God. The good news of Christmas is not in a season of generic goodwill, but about God's goodwill toward man. That he came to earth to establish peace. We read it a couple weeks ago in Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That's where Christmas peace is. That's where Christmas joy is. That's where Christmas hope is. That's where Christmas love is. In the salvation that Jesus made possible for us, not only by his incarnation, but by his crucifixion and by his resurrection, to save us from our sins, to make us into a people for himself. Any rejoicing and any hope that's placed anywhere other than that falls flat. The good news of Christmas is the gospel message of our Lord Jesus Christ that says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We've seen His glory. The Creator of the universe became that which He created. He considered equality with God not something to be grasped a hold of and used to his own advantage, but instead he humbled himself and took on the form of man. That he became obedient even to the point of death, even to death on a cross. God became man, why? So that he could live with us, so that he could dwell with us. And not only for those 30 years while Jesus walked the earth, but so that we might then live with him for all eternity. See, this is what this is all about. This is about God wanting to be with man. And because of our sin, we have been separated with God. But God came so that we might be reunited with him in peace, not only now, but for all time. But not only for all time, but also for now. Christianity isn't a religion of do's and don'ts. It's not a political movement. It's not a social club. It's not a great place to do music and get together with friends. It's not a place to to learn good ethics and morality, although it's some of those things in some capacity. But ultimately, Christianity is a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's the God of the universe humbling himself in an unfathomable way. Not only to put on flesh and live among us, but to go to the cross and pay the penalty of our sin. He who had no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. 
The presents are going to get opened, and most of them soon tossed aside. The concerts and the family gatherings are going to be over, and all this stuff is going to get put away. It's going to go back in a box. And if Christmas comes in a box, then we have a long, cold winter ahead and another 11 months before it comes back again. But if you know Jesus Christ, if you have been born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation, 1 Peter 1, 3 to 5, then as wonderful as all this is, don't settle for this cheap hallmark stuff. Receive the real Christmas, the incarnation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the eternal Creator God, the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. Allow Him to live in you by repenting of your sins, trusting Him for salvation, and inviting Him to be the Lord of your life. Don't put Christmas in a box. Live it every single day. So if you're here this morning and you've never known anything but Christmas in a box, I want you to know the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I want you to know the God who put on flesh for you because He wants you. And He doesn't just want to pay for your sins so that you can get your ticket into heaven. He wants you to abide with him. He wants to live with you. He put on flesh so that he could dwell among us. He wants to live in you every day. So if you don't know this living God, if God hasn't come and made his home in your life, today's a great day to invite him. Today's a great day to open up a gift that is like no other. Today's a great day to put that Christmas in a box and open into the real Christmas, the incarnation of our Lord. Let's pray. Father, if there are any here today that are not yet your children and they're looking for something that doesn't fade away. Would you, by your power of your Holy Spirit, draw them to yourself? Even as you came and revealed yourself as the Word of God and came and and lived among us, would you reveal yourself now, Lord Jesus, to their heart, that you'd overwhelm them with the feeling of your presence, that they might surrender their lives to you, that they might stop living for themselves And Lord, receive the gift of love and forgiveness and grace, eternal life in Jesus Christ, salvation from our sins. If you're here today and you don't know this love, you have never had this hope, all you've known is Christmas in a box and you want something different, then I invite you to pray along with me in your heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. There is room in my heart today. Lord, I want to experience true peace, lasting joy, and the love of God. Not that we loved you, but that you loved us first and gave your life for us as a propitiation for our sin. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I trust you for salvation because I can't earn it, because I know that I'm a sinner, because I'm broken, because I've made mistakes. And Lord, there's salvation found in no one else. I've tried it. I need you because you're the Lord of lords 
and you're the King of Kings. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There's room in my heart today. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. As we close our service, we invite you to stand and sing our closing hymn, Joy to the World. Let's pray. Timothy Fire, thank you for this morning and the time to celebrate your son's birth. Lord, that the word became flesh. That Christmas isn't just a season to pull boxes out. But Lord, that we get to remember you all year round. Lord, that we get to worship you, to celebrate, and to have that true joy and that everlasting hope. Lord, I pray that as we go out from here, we would carry that with us to the people around us and in our everyday lives. We pray these things in your precious son's name. Amen. There is a dinner in the fellowship hall all set up for all of you who uh, desire to join us. So please, there's plenty of food, whether you plan to or not. Uh, I'd love to have you guys join us for food and fellowship. I forgot to pray for food, so I'm sorry if you would pray with me one more time for food. Lord, we thank you.